But I've been asked to introduce our next, next speaker, uh, Chef AJ. And you know, I wrote this introduction out, but uh, my handwriting is like a doctor's, so I'm gonna you know, read it off my, tel my phone here. Um, Chef AJ has been devoted to the plant-exclusive diet for nearly 45 years. She was the host of the television series Healthy Living with Chef AJ, which aired on Foodie TV. She's a chef, a culinary instructor, professional speaker, and she is the author of three best-selling books, The Secret to Ultimate Weight Loss, A Revolutionary Approach to Conquer Cravings, Overcome Food Addiction and Lose Weight Without Going Hungry. And also the uh, third one is Own Your Health and the 10th uh, Anniversary Edition of Unprocessed, all which have been received uh, glowing endorsements by many luminaries in the plant-based movement. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Chef AJ was the executive pastry chef at Sente Restaurant in Los Angeles, where she was famous for her sugar, oil, salt, and gluten-free desserts, which used the fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the whole fruit. She broadcasts Chef AJ Alive on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter daily. She is the creator, creator of the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, which has helped hundreds of people achieve the health and body they deserve, and is proud to say that her IQ, this is great, her IQ is higher than her cholesterol. In 2018, she was inducted into the Vegetarian Hall of Fame. So I think Chef AJ should be on the screen before long, and I know you're gonna enjoy her presentation. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. Hi, everybody. Sorry I can't be there in person, but hopefully you will enjoy this presentation. And I hear that you're going to be getting a sample of at least one of the recipes that I'm making. And so today I'm going to show you how to satisfy your sweet tooth without using sugar, using the fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the whole fruit. So help me God. And I've actually been vegan for over 45 years. So I have been eating lots of vegan desserts. I was a pastry chef in Los Angeles for five years, an executive vegan pastry chef. And uh, I haven't used sugar in 20 years. So let's get started. The first recipe I'm going to make is something from one of my books called A Date with Dessert. I'm going to be making cinnamon buns that are good for your buns. They're actually more like cupcakes. And I'm preheating the oven right now and we'll get started. One of the reasons I'm able to often do so many recipes in a cooking demonstration is I do something called mise en place where I gather all my ingredients up. I have them measured in advance and then it goes much more quickly than if you're running around to your cabinets and doing things in real time. So I have in my blender, I have my non-dairy milk. I like to use vanilla almond milk, but any non-dairy milk for doing any of these recipes. And I put my dates in the blender. They're already soaking. With a high power blender, you might not need to do that, but it just makes less work of the blender when you can do it that way. I have my oats. I use gluten free so everyone can enjoy them. And my seasonings, which are cinnamon and vanilla powder. So I'm gonna put them in the blender. If you haven't tried vanilla powder, I really recommend it. It's so much better than vanilla extract, which really is just vanilla water. And then I have my bananas. You can see that these are like almost black. And that's how you want to use your bananas if you're using them, in my opinion, in dessert recipes, because that is when they're sweetest. For eating, this would be way too ripe for me, but for freezing, for ice creams and sorbets and for dessert recipes, this is how I want them. I always recommend that you peel your banana before you freeze it. It makes it a lot easier when the banana is frozen with the peel. It's really hard to get off the peel when they're frozen. What's nice about a high powered blender is that you can pretty much fit everything in it. I'm actually making one and a half times the recipe because whenever I cook, I like to batch cook because I like to have a lot left over so that I can eat some, share some and freeze some. Believe it or not, what I'm making right now is pancake batter. And the way that this recipe came to be is that I get really frustrated, just gonna wash my hands for a minute, making pancakes and waffles because you can only make like one at a time. And it was taking forever and I had all this batter and I thought, well, what would happen if I baked them? And that's how this recipe came to be. So I think Zoom normally mutes the noises. So I'm just gonna process this in the blender. 
It makes a pretty thick batter because as I mentioned, it was it is was supposed to be pancake batter. And I'm gonna add just for extra sweetness, some golden raisins, just because I like them better than the purple ones. I think they taste a little bit less raisiny, if you will. And I'm gonna add my apple cider vinegar and my baking powder. I use both aluminum-free and sodium-free baking powder, which you can get often in health food stores and online. And I'm gonna just leave one again. And that's it. I mean, that's a really, really easy recipe. And so I'm going to pour it into a silicone muffin pan because it's so much easier when you're doing oil free cooking and baking to use silicone. And like I said, if you're somebody that likes to make pancakes and waffles, here's your batter. You don't ever really need to use sugar. Anything anyone can do with sugar, if it's vegan, I can do without sugar using fruit, especially dates. Dates are like nature's candy. And they're so much better for you because they have fiber, and water, and vitamins, and minerals, phytochemicals, antioxidants, micronutrients. They're still fairly calorically dense at about 1,300 calories per pound but still way less calorically dense than sugar, which is 1800 calories per pound. And they taste amazing. There's so many different varieties. Some taste exactly like eating caramel candies. I haven't had sugar since January 6, 2003. I'm coming up on my 20th anniversary of sugar sobriety. And I also don't use oil or salt in any of my recipes. I know that one of your wonderful speakers at your veg fest was Alan Goldhammer. So I learned all that from him. Here we go, have a little bit extra batter. So maybe I will make a pancake or a waffle out of this. And if there's time, I'll even show you how to do it or I can just top these off a little bit. Now these are good, these are gonna have to bake for 30 minutes and I like to frost these. I might not be able to actually frost them because they'll still be warm, but I can at least show you the frosting I make. But I have friends, one is named Kenny that actually prefer them without the frosting. I used to love eating Cinnabons, but if you've ever looked at the nutritional information on a Cinnabon, it's probably more calories than most people need for a day. So I'm just gonna gently, can you hold it down? Just gently go like this to get it to even up. And I'm gonna stick it in the preheated oven and be right back. Okay. All right, so the next recipe I'm going to make is the cherry cobbler, and that is from my book, the 10th anniversary edition of Unprocessed, which was co-written by another one of your wonderful speakers this weekend, Ben Merzer. There's three parts to the cherry cobbler. There's the filling, which is the cherry part. There's the streusel topping, and then there's the whip topping. So we're going to do three parts. The first thing I'm going to make is the sugar full topping. When I originally wrote the original edition of Unprocessed with Glenn in 2010 and was published in 2011, it was a great book. However, a lot of the recipes were super high in fat and we found there were people that were wanting to lose weight or following a Dr. McDougall or Dr. Esselstyn style diet the recipes were too high in fat. So in the 10th anniversary edition, we took the recipes that were high in fat and found substitutes for people that wanted to lower the fat in their desserts. So you can certainly do it the original way. But one of the ways to lower the fat is when I was using nuts, I substituted oats. And I did this both in sweet recipes and savory, sometimes substituting beans, actually, or even cauliflower. But for dessert recipes, oats work amazing in place of the pecans, which were in the recipe. And I also have here my cinnamon, nutmeg, and vanilla powder. Now, coconut is very high in fat. However, you can buy coconut now. And I bought this at Sprouts, but they also have it on, at Whole Foods and at Amazon. That's actually really much lower in fat. It's reduced fat. It's about two thirds, I believe, the fat of regular coconut if you buy it defatted. 
So we're going to take these items for the streusel topping and put them in the food processor fitted with the S blade. <laughs> Again, if you'd rather use the pecans instead of the oats, no problem. And I'm just going to process this into a coarse grind. <laughs> Then I'm going to take my dates, my find it. If you're a Costco member, great prices on organic deadlet nor dates. These are my favorite ones to use in recipes because they're the most affordable. They're supposed to be pitted, but usually we end up finding the pit. And they're on sale right now, $5.99 for two and a half pounds. I'm going to put my dates in. I've done this so long, I don't even have to measure. My hand knows exactly what to put in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to process them, but I don't want to go all the way as if I were making like a pie crust or a truffle. When it slows down like that, it usually tells me that there's a pit. And sure enough, There's the pit. I don't know why they say pitted dates, but there's a pit. And if you have any questions, if there's a way to ask me, I'm happy to answer them. <laughs> so what I'm trying to do is make it like a streusel topping. Streusel in the regular world is usually things like flour and butter or oil, brown sugar, so what I'm trying to do is get coarse crumbs. And this is actually going to be very tasty. This is actually just good on everything. This is good on fruit. This is good on nice cream that you could make. I've, I've actually put it on pie. Like, it we were, I teach a dessert master class on the weekends and people were putting this on their pies before baking it. And it was wonderful. So what I'm going to do now is just put this in a bowl. And there probably will be leftovers, and that's okay. I just stick it in my freezer for when I need it again. So now I'm going to make the cherry filling. This is the F-blade, by the way. This is the most common blade that you would use when you're using a food processor. It usually also comes with a shredding blade. I'm going to take my cherries. What's nice about cherries is these, where I live in California, I'm able to find frozen cherries at places like Whole Foods, Sprouts, Costco. Trader Joe's all year round. So however much fruit you're using, and I prefer cherry, but I've done this with mango and peach or even a combination. I take a buff fourth of it separate. So I'm using four one pound bags of cherry. So I have three bags, maybe come over, three bags right here where I am just draining them. And I have all the juice there, which I will save and use in flavor club soda with it. And then one bag separate. So I'm gonna take the bag that I have separate and put it in my food processor with some dates that I have soaked in the cherry juice. So the way I make date paste is just taking dates and a liquid and soaking it. But since this is cherry cobbler, I figured why not just soak it in some of the cherry juice instead of using water. So I'm gonna put this in the food processor. There's really not that many dates there, maybe a cup. These cherries are very sweet. And then I'm going to process that into like a puree. Then to thicken it, I'm going to add some chia seeds. Chia seeds are a great natural thickener. You can actually make jam just by taking a fruit fresh or frozen and adding chia seeds to it, dates if necessary for sweetening. And they're also a good source of those omega-3 fatty acids. I don't really measure, that was probably a couple of tablespoons. And I'll process again. It does take a little bit of time for the thickening magic to work. You've probably heard of chia pudding where you take fruit and chia and non-dairy milk. And then what I'm going to do is put it all together.
So I'm going to take my cherries that have defrosted and been drained, and put it in a bigger bowl. Save that cherry juice for another use. And then mix the puree in with the cherries. See, the chia seeds have already started to thicken this. And if I let it go in the refrigerator for a while, it will turn nice and thick. And like I said, this is the easiest way to make sugar-free or fruit sweetened jam. Chia seed, a fruit, fresh or frozen, and dates to sweeten if necessary. And you can see these recipes I'm making, they don't take very long. And that's what I like to do is have recipes that are not just healthy and delicious, but quick and easy. And then I'm just gonna mix this in. My husband, who is managing the camera, loves this dessert more than anything. This is served chilled as a parfait, I'm gonna show you in a moment, but it can also be warmed in a dehydrator. So it's technically considered a raw dessert. So I'm just gonna put this aside for a minute and show you the last layer. I do need to wipe up my space here. And plating is everything. So we're gonna show you some ways to plate it. So the whipped topping, the third layer, is gonna be made from pears. Originally in the book on process, we used pears and cashews. And you can do that and they're quite delicious. But since we're making this low fat so that I can eat it, what we're going to do is use oats in place of the pears. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drain the pears. I do recommend using either jarred or canned pears. The reason being Fresh pears can be very hard and not very sweet unless they're absolutely ripe. When I teach at Rancho La Puerta in Mexico, we sometimes roast the pears to get them sweeter. But I find since it's so easy to get pears either in their own juice or in white grape juice at places like Trader Joe's and really even, you know, the Winco, a regular store, that's what I use. And I'll reuse this jar for salad dressings that I give away to people. So I've got my pears strained. And I just realized I'm going to have to rinse my blender out because I have to use the blender to blend this. You know what I could do is I, could, I just had an idea. I have this little silicone pan where everything ends up looking like a waffle. Since I need to have my blender now, that's what I think I'll do. And I'll bake the muffins into waffle shape. You ever wish you had a second canister for your blender? I sure do right now. Looks like it'll make about two waffles, maybe three. I, I could put this in a regular waffle iron too. There we go. I'll need to smooth that out. See, if I was there in person, I would probably have somebody that could rinse the blender for me. Just going to smooth this out. Like I say, if you have a pancake griddle or a waffle iron, I think you would like this batter very much. And I'll just bake this and the other thing comes out of the oven. And these freeze really well. I mean, people would probably think these are waffles because of the shape once they come out. Okay. I always hit it on the thing to disperse it evenly. And one layer to go. 
good topic. What's nice about vegan dessert is if people are not used to eating vegan, we try to give them something like tofu or tempeh. They may not like it right away, but a dessert, if it looks like a cake, a cookie, candy, cupcake, or muffin, one that tastes good, people aren't saying, well, you know, where's the egg? Where's the dairy? So I found desserts are a great way to get people to eat more vegan food because more people really love desserts. And again, dates are so incredibly sweet that most people don't say, where's the sugar? Where's the oil? Almost ready. Oh, it's not very hot, Charles. Okay. Chef AJ, while you are cleaning that up and getting that next layer ready, does anyone have any questions for her at this point? Yeah. Oh, food processor too. You want to send one of your volunteers over? That'd be great. <laughs> okay. I may as well do the food processor while I'm sitting here because I'm going to need that again. Well. Okay. Looks like we do have a question for you. Great. Thank you. Did you use sweet cherries or sour cherries? Uh, did you use sweet cherries or sour oh, cherries? Sweet, sweet, for sure, sweet, yeah. Um, I've actually, when they're frozen, I've actually only seen them for you, but definitely sweet, or you'll need a lot more days. Great question. Great question. We have another question for you. I was just curious what's in the waffle. Um, recipe was that a gluten-free waffle yes i i always um even though i'm gluten-free myself even before i had to be gluten-free by necessity i always use gluten-free oats because invariably somebody is going to have a gluten intolerance so i use gluten-free oats bananas dates raisins cinnamon and vanilla baking powder and apple cider vinegar and that was what was in the, the cupcake part there we go all right, blender cream. So now we're going to make the whipped pear topping. I have a choice to get the blender back. Okay. Whoops, didn't clean this one though. There we go. No matter how big my kitchen, we're big enough. All right. Using both a Blendtec and a Vitamix today. If you can tell me what your favorite is. Both good. Really, this and again, I love when recipes have components that can be mixed and matched. So, as I mentioned, the streusel topping can be a topping on other items. The cherry could be a topping on ice cream, for example. And this whipped cream can have a variety of uses. So, I'm just going to take my pears. These are about two and a half cups. If you do a canned pear, it's probably a little bit less. And then I'm going to add. My gluten-free oats and my vanilla powder. If you don't have vanilla powder, you can add extract, but I promise you, if you can get vanilla powder, you're gonna think it tastes better. But it does. It's just the brown vanilla bean. And there's our topping. If you want it a little bit thicker, you can add some chia seeds, but I do recommend that you would add white ones instead of black ones. They're, they're actually very available even at Whole Foods because the black ones will completely discolor this and it won't look very pretty. And if you're going to add chia seeds to something like this, you want to add it to some liquid first to kind of make a slurry rather than just adding it to the blender because there really isn't a lot of liquid in the blender. So now the fun part, I can show you how we plate this. Make it look beautiful. Just get my glasses. Someone just gave me these beautiful glasses that I'm going to use, but you can get beautiful glasses even in places like the dollar store, the 99 cent store. I also have these glasses that are my standard drinking glasses. These are actually milkshot glasses. And I want to show you one other option. If it's too labor intensive for you to individually plate desserts, I have a trifle bowl right here that's being used to hold my hand of yams. And I have done this just in one gigantic bowl and it's a very beautiful presentation. 
what I like to do to get all your three components available, truthful, cherry filling, and the topping. I like using scoops of a variety of sizes and I like doing layers. So I'm just gonna put in This one needs two scoops because it's a bigger cup. Actually, I think I'll put two in both. Get a little spoon on here. Even it out. If you want to be perfect, you can get a paper towel, wipe off any spills. When I worked in a restaurant, there was somebody, that's what their job was to do that. Then you take your streusel topping. Make, you know, a generous layer. Of the cherries. Now, you can go to cherry right now if you want. You can put a little whip in the middle here. Just wanna make sure we have enough to go on top. <coughs> Looks like I'm gonna have to get one more glass at least. When I make these small, I can get about eight to 11 out of them. When I make them large, not as much, but it's just the two of us here today. So I don't need as many. I wish you could taste this, it's so good. So now I'm gonna repeat the load. Sometimes what I do is before I mix up the cherries, I'll take a single cherry or a few, and then I'll put that as a very last topping. I did not do that this time. I think people love individual desserts though, if you have the time to plate it, rather than use rifle bowl. I mean, if you were going to like a church potluck or a picnic, might not be feasible to do individuals, but that would be a case for making it in a trifle bowl. But do try to make it as pretty as possible with an attractive glass. Stop. There are some sprinkles that I'm out of right now, sold by a company called Lenzies that are made out of purple sweet potatoes. When I have those, I do like to put them on top, but we could sprinkle with nutmeg as well. Just put a little bit more whipped cream. Something. This looks fantastic. And I will place the rest of them later. I'm actually going to a vegan restaurant for dinner tonight in Sacramento where they'll make SOS free if you tell them in advance. And I think what I'll do is I'll bring one of these to the chefs. So I, have, I don't know about you, but to me, this looks amazingly delicious. We've got all the layers and I wish you could taste it. So there's our cherry cobbler. And of course you want to keep these in the refrigerator. Oh, I, I think we wish we could taste that too. <laughs> I'm thinking, I wish I could taste it. <laughs> Actually, I didn't have anything sweet after lunch. I, I do have, people think, oh, I don't know if you know my story. I lost, you know, 50 pounds 11 years ago. And people think I don't eat dessert. I actually eat dessert every day, usually twice a day. I don't eat a huge amount and I don't eat high fat desserts. But something like this, I mean, I wasn't doing a demo right now. Believe me, I'd be chowing down on that. So now I'm going to make a recipe from the new book. 
and it's called Caramel Blondies. It's one of my favorites, and I, I have almost always have them in the freezer, except that we have company Friday, and they actually went into my freezer and took <laughs> all my dessert because they knew it was in there. So I'm telling people that. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm I'm not when I say I'm not following the recipe, I am, but I tend to make larger quantities, and so instead of doing the normal size recipe, which is in an eight by eight or nine by nine pan, I'm using a nine by thirteen because I want more. This is a pan that's, I think it's called a Popper Chef. This is great because when you do oil-free cooking or baking, it doesn't stick. So I will need a processor. For this one. And I, um, I don't need the blender now, but I will need it when I make the frappuccino. Okay. One of the things, one of the reasons I did this trusel topping first is because now that my blender has been washed, there's going to be a little bit of water in it, even if I dry it. So when you're doing dry things like nuts or oats, you don't want any liquid in the blender at all because then you won't get a dry topping. You get more like a pesto. So that's kind of important to know. So my um, blade, S blade. So now what we're going to do is use my very favorite ingredient, which is the Hannah yam. I eat this for lunch every day with broccoli. Look how big this one is. <laughs> this is almost five pounds. So this would be like two or three servings for me. So these are amazing. These are different than the orange sweet potatoes. These are white on the inside. This is what they look like on the inside. So kind of like actually like a, a yellow color. They do not taste at all like the orange ones. The orange ones, I'm sorry, guys, they just don't taste good to me, especially in desserts. This tastes like cake. When you eat a roasted, not a steamed or a microwave, a roasted Hannah yam, you think you are eating like wedding cake, like white vanilla cake. This is so, so good. So I use these in my dessert recipes, both for filling and frosting. You will have to roast them first, or they will not have that uh, caramelization, that sweetness that you would get if you were going to microwave them or steam them. So let's see. I refer to my recipe. This is the book, by the way, photos by Hannah Kaminsky, who coincidentally is speaking today at a veg fest not far from me called the San Francisco Veg Fest. Oh, I have to make my date paste first. Okay. Got it. Okay. So. What I'm going to do, guess what? My cinnamon buns are ready, but I'll send them to you in a minute. So I use date paste for most of my recipes. And what date paste is, is simply dates that have been soaking in a liquid. That liquid can be water, water's free, it can be non-dairy milk. In this case, I'm using vanilla almond milk. It can even be fruit juice, depending on the recipe, like we did for the cherry cobbler. My ratio is one pound to eight ounces. Uh, there are other ratios, but for my recipes, that's what works. You want to soak them in advance or it will be difficult for your blade to do it. So I'm putting this in the food processor, hit it with the S blade, and I'm going to make a puree. This lasts a very, very long time in your refrigerator and even longer in your freezer. And you can use it for pretty much all your sweetening needs, except for it would not like sweeten coffee or tea because it's not a liquid, it's a paste. So I'm going to puree. <laughs> Have you ever seen it where it does, it always has a pit. It always, always. I teach a lot of classes and that'll be the day where it doesn't do that. So I need to puree this into a smooth paste. I feel the pit, I can, I can hear it. I've been doing this for 20 years. I know when there's a pit. Here we go, number two. Don't get these in your garbage disposal. You can break them. I'm telling you from experience. There we go. So now I have this smooth paste. 
if you refrigerate it, it won't get super firm, but it will get a little bit more spreadable. And this is actually going to be the frosting for my blondies. However, I did forget a very, very important ingredient, which is the vanilla powder. Going to add that now. I just buy whatever brand on Amazon is cheapest at the time. You just want to get one, put in two teaspoons because I really like vanilla. Whichever one has just vanilla beans. What vanilla powder is is simply vanilla beans that have been grated. Vanilla extract tends to have alcohol or glycerin, and it's it's really just a watered down, poor substitute. So I'm going to take this aside. This is going to be used for my frosting of the blondies. After they cool, Day Pace makes an incredible frosting for all kinds of cakes, banana cakes, carrot cakes. It's so sweet and caramely and delicious. So I'm just going to put this in here, but I don't need to be too careful about cleaning out my food processor because it's okay that if any residual date paste is in there, it'll just further sweeten the recipe. You can buy commercial date paste. The problem is it's very, very hard. So you still have to reconstitute it in some way with some liquid and a food processor to use in a recipe. Okay, so put that aside. Now we will make the filling for the cake or for the blondie. I like the cake. So we're going to take our ripe bananas. I always have bananas at varying degrees of ripening in my house because I want to be able to eat some, but these are too ripe for me. I don't like them when they're super green either. There's like a, it's like a one day window where I like bananas. And then it's like, oh, too ripe. Oh, too one ripe. I feel like, like a Goldilocks in the pears when it comes to bananas. But I also always have bananas in my freezer, which you'll see in a minute when we make our guilt-free cappuccino. I don't know about you, but a lot of times stores will discount bananas when they're like this. When, I mean, that, I buy them because this is like perfect for my uses for baking. So I'm just gonna put these. Now that's so funny because this is Michiana Veg Fest. This bowl is from Holland, Michigan, by the way. It's from uh, Holland Bowl. I mean, just make sure I can throw my date kit away with two of them. Where's the second one? Uh oh, here they are. I always count. All right, here we go. So I'm going to just take these bananas and puree them into a puree using the food processor. And then we're going to add our Hannah yams. So I always have these in my fridge because I'm always going to eat these for lunch, either roasted and reheated, or sometimes I'll air fry them after roasting them. I'll take the skin off. This one had a little piece of skin and I'll put like one cup measurements. I have five of these in here because I'm going to be using two of them to make the frosting for the cinnamon bun cupcakes. I'll put that in the food processor as well. Again, I'm making like a, like a one and a half times recipe. that in there. This is a new food processor I recently got because my cuisine are broke. It's called the Breville. I have no affiliation with the company, but I will tell you it's the most powerful one I've used for home use. In restaurants, we use a RoboCoop, but for home use, I've never seen one quite this well. So I'm gonna puree again. <laughs> And then I'm going to place this in a bowl and then stir in my dry ingredients. This is almost like a banana cake, 
but not quite. It's not going to be very banana-y, but it does have kind of the moistness of a banana cake. I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember Sara Lee banana cake oh, when I was 10 years old. Boy, did I love that. That was so true. Nobody doesn't like Sara Lee. So this could actually be a frosting, by the way. And um, I have used this as a frosting for my carrot cake, just sweet potatoes, dates, and bananas. I want to show you a little trick. You see how there's like lots of the filling on the blade and it kind of takes a long time to clean the blade. Here's a little trick you might like. If you want to clean the blade really easily, all you do is you put the top back on the food processor and literally pulse it for one second. And then what happens is through centrifugal force, the blade is now completely or almost completely clean. And you'll see that there's quite a lot a filling that was left in here on the blade. Well, I've seen a lot of people, even when they make hummus, don't take the time to do that little step. A lot more filling when you do that. All right. Actually, we don't have to clean this because it's going to be almost the same ingredients for the frosting. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir in my dry. These are my oats, cinnamon, my vanilla powder. I'm going to mix it. Now there is one more ingredient that has to go in, but I have to go get the other blender to show you what that is. And that is uh, a little bit of millet. So I try not to use flour if at all possible or even grind my oats into a flour. But I find that when you cook with oats, they can be a little bit gummy, a texture that I don't like. So what I do to mitigate it is just put a little bit of millet that's ground into a flour. Now you can buy millet already ground into a flour, but number one, it's more expensive. Two, it's harder to find. And three, by buying the millet whole, then I have the whole grain to also enjoy because millet is really a delicious whole grain and it's an underused grain. So what I'm gonna do is bring this one over here because remember I'm grinding a grain now. So I need, I need it to be dry. Well, luckily, I have a second one, the Vitamix. I'm going to need that again yeah. in a second. So if you could just plug this in. So millet, it's bird seed, but it's fantastic. And if you haven't tried it, cooked this whole grain, I would really encourage you to do that. I found this at Sprout. Some stores like Winco can it in the bulk aisle. You can always get it online. Bob's Red Mill makes it. Millet is a naturally free grain. I believe it's an ancient grain. But you don't see it a lot. And I don't know why, because it's amazing. It's got a very toothsome quality. It rice. You can see it looks like little bird seed, because that's what it is, is bird seed. So I just usually grind it as I go along. Yeah, measure. I don't need, I don't need, I'll put it up about that. And with the dry blender, I'm just going to, and also by grinding it myself, it's not as fine as the flowers if I were to have bought it. That was fast. And again, it's not perfectly or finely ground, but I don't know how I figured this out, but it just does help mitigate that gummy texture of when you're just using unground rolled oats. So this is a little bit too sticky still, so I'm gonna add a few more oats. Again, I'm not following my recipe exactly because I'm trying to make more than one batch. Luckily, I have oats at the ready. If somebody were allergic to oats, the only thing I can think of people are telling me is maybe to use quinoa flakes. I've never used them because my husband is allergic, but that would be the thing. But oats are great if you can use them. They're very affordable. My gosh, at uh, Costco, they're like $1.88 a pound. That's a great store, by the way, if you have access to it. Membership pays for itself in no time. And with the executive membership, you get money back at the end of the year. And prescription glasses, pet medication, it's amazing. So I just wanna make sure everything is fully incorporated. 
it's funny because yesterday I was teaching my dessert master class and everything had chocolate. And today everything's more vanilla. And believe it or not, I, I like vanilla better than chocolate. I don't know why, but I do. All right. So now I'm going to put it in the pan. I'll take my cinnamon buns out now. So I'll keep putting this in the oven. This is, this is a hearty bar. It's not like a light and fluffy pound cake kind of thing. I, it's, it's food. So one of the things I pride myself on in my desserts is they're not made from sugar, flour, oil, salt. They're made from food. So every ingredient in here, the millet, the oat, the sweet potato, the banana, it's food. We could eat it. I mean, not, not that I want to eat this batter, but I could. It's, it's food. So there we go. You know what's easier than using the spatula? Wetting your hands, making sure they're clean, and then evenly pressing it down. That's what I'm gonna do. So I made like a one and a half times recipe. And, well, and I'm gonna bake this for about 40 minutes at 350. I, I tend to like my desserts a little bit less moist, more on the dry side, so I might go 45 or 50. <laughs> I like it. And when it's cooled, I will frost it with the date paste, which I have chilled, and then maybe sprinkle it with some coconut or some streusel topping. This is also great with fruit on top, berries I've done. So we're going to go put this in the oven as we get the other item out. Right there. I mean, this, this almost smells like gingerbread. So these are perfect, absolutely perfect. And hopefully by the, before the demo ends, I'll be able to pop them out without it tearing the other one in. And it's just small. But I still have a few more minutes. I have a couple more recipes I'd like to show you. So one is the frosting for the cinnamon on top cakes. Oh, hang on a second. Get out. For now, I'm giving my food to the sister. So I, I had a class yesterday, so I, I made some drink paste. And you can see that when you first make day paste, it's not liquidy, but it's a little bit jiggly. But once you make it, see, that's what happens. That's why it's going to be so great as a frosting. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my can of yams. I'm going to take some vanilla powder. And I wish like this was on the New York Stock Exchange. That's what I would do is I would just um, get some vanilla powder. My chilled date paste. And I'm going to puree it. Or process it. I want it as thick as possible, but if it doesn't process, then I can add a little bit of non dairy milk but I first want to be sure that I don't need to because I want it thick. But I also want to make sure it tastes sweet enough as well. So before I would add the milk, I want to taste it just to make sure because if it's not sweet enough, I could add a little bit more 
date paste or even a little bit of date syrup, but what I'm gonna do is get a little tasting spoon. Mm. Mm. The vanilla powder is amazing. So what I'm gonna do, It is sweet enough, but I'm still going to add just a tiny bit of date syrup because I want it a little bit thinner. And when it's sweet enough for me, that means it's not sweet enough for regular people. So I just probably put a couple of tablespoons in. This will thin it out a little and then make it a little tiny bit sweeter for the masses. But boy, that vanilla powder is something. <laughs> Now, one of the secrets to baking, whether it's vegan or not, is you've got to really let things cool. So I will be bringing the cinnamon buns over here, but I'm, I don't want to poke it out of the pan now because it's going to, look at this consistency. This is like perfect. I'll taste it again using the other side of my spoon, no double dipping. Oh man, that's perfect. Wow. That little bit of date syrup was. I'm using a silicone muffin pan because it makes cleanup easily and it's so easy with oil free baking or cooking. But see, if I try to poke it out now, I'm just afraid it's not cool, it's going to stick. So I apologize, but I got to let it cool. I have to do and let it cross. But I still have one more recipe. It actually, can be three recipes. So I'm gonna make you the guilt-free frappuccino. Charles, can I have the blend tech? And let me see if I can have the... So basically I'm making a designer coffee drink, like you would get at Starbucks, but without the sugar, without the caffeine, and without the five or six dollar price tag. But it can be made into multiple recipes. My husband loves these, so he's going to drink this as a beverage that he used to pay $10 for when we lived in the desert called date shakes. But what you can also do is get one of these molds at a store or on Amazon and make individual fudgicles out of it. Or if you have the Ninja Creamy, which is the best ice cream machine I have found, and I have seven of them. I have all of them, Blendtec, Vitamix, Yonanas, Nutra Milk, um, Queasy Nart, one more champion juicer it, it is the best you can uh, spin it and make you know like a cappuccino ice cream or date ice cream so one of the things i teach is batch cooking because if you want healthy food you have to always have it ready and so any recipe that i know i'm going to make which is most recipes because most people don't eat 30 different breakfasts 30 different lunches 30 different dinners is i get these little jars anytime you have spices they come in a jar and if you wash it in the dishwasher the label comes out and then I have it already measured for every recipe. And then I do 12 of these and then I don't have to make it every time. So where's the blender? You know where the blend tech blender is? Hmm. Okay. Ah, here it is. Oh. Well, I've got a little, oh, you know what? I'll use the Vitamix. Let's switch to the Vitamix. Mm -hmm. The Blendtec the blend still had the you know, whipped cream. It's okay. The Vitamix, I can just rinse out the millet. And then we'll use that. See, that's why it's good to have two blenders. Okay. Perfect. So I have my non-dairy milk of choice. I already measured out. Whoa. Just break something. Where's the little spicer? I can't believe I cannot find it. My pre measured out spices for frappuccino. And I'm going to put a few dates in here.
medjool dates at Sprouts are usually $10.99, but they had these on sale for $1.99. And I don't know what these mean, root top dates, but these are the sweetest dates I've ever tasted. So I'm going to put in for my husband. Well, three would be enough for me. So let's give him four. Right now, I the only other ingredient that needs to come in here are the frozen bananas. So right now, it's a date shake, which are very popular where I used to live in the desert. But if you want to make it a cappuccino or a frappuccino, you can add a coffee substitute. If you drink coffee, you could probably just add that or espresso powder. But we're both caffeine sensitive. So I like this product called Samey Unforgettable Dark Roast. It's literally made out of one ingredient, organic brown rice. But there are other coffee blends like Dandy Blend or coffee substitute blends or Pero that you could use. So we're going to, for a strong coffee flavor, we're going to use two tablespoons. You could use one. When I teach at Rancho La Puerta, this is a recipe that you always make and the, the class always seems to love it. This smells and tastes, in my opinion, just like coffee. Now I gotta get my bananas from the freezer. Like I mentioned, I always have bananas in the freezer. I'm just gonna break them up a little bit. Oh, the coffee flavors. Put them in the blender. One thing that I like about the Vitamix that the Blendtec doesn't have is the tamper. tamper for this machine. And there's still a big chunk of banana in there, so we're gonna let that go and more. If I'm making this for myself, I'll add some ice lowers the caloric density and just makes it a little bit more ice cream like and voluminous and it almost has a, a mocha or a chocolate flavor i'm going to blend that again i think for you why is the banana see how thick and kind of chalk look at that big banana chunk i gotta blend that again i'm sorry i i thought you were a good vita, uh, a good blender vitamix what's up with that supposed to be the best anyway if you have any questions, happy to answer them. Sorry about that. Just he wants to drink this. So Does anybody have any questions so far? I feel like we're all in here taking in our own private chef's show for all of the things we can go home and want to make. Oh, this is really good. Okay. But try this. Uh, he's just going to get it with a piece of banana. That's all there is to it. And to be mindful of the environment, let's use plastic, uh, not plastic, let's use glass straws. And that's that. So how many recipes? I did five or six recipes in exactly an hour. That's pretty good. I hope you'll try this one, though, and invite me if you like it. And uh, if you want to connect with me every day at 11 o'clock, I'm on YouTube Live. I've been there for almost three years, over 1,200 episodes of Chef AJ Live. Many of the speakers, in fact, pretty much all of them, Robert Cheek, Glenn Merzer, Dr. Goldhammer, they've all been on the show many, many times. Thank you for this opportunity, and thank you all for being vegan. Yeah, well, we are so thankful to you for taking time uh, to do this with us. I know there was a request um, sort of a joke, sort of a truth <laughs> as to whether or not we could see your freezer. Sure. I mean, we can have a camera. Absolutely. Absolutely. What brand of coffee did you use? It's not coffee. It's a coffee substitute. Well, first thing I want you to see is my freezer. Look what the outside. Let me put some extra lights on. The first thing I want you to see is what it says on my freezer. Vegan refrigerator. Eat like you give a damn and vegan food only. Open I hope there's nothing bad in here, but okay, here we go. Well, of course we have ice. Ice is not a bad thing. My husband does eat some processed food, so there's bread, but I also have lots of pints of the Ninja Creamy ready to spin, including 
what we just made. So I took that shake and I put it in a Ninja Creamy pie. So I'm going to spin this at some point and make some ice cream. What else is in my freezer? Oh, lots of <laughs> lots of rice. I do eat a lot of organic rice, grilled white and brown from Trader Joe's, Sprouts, or Whole Foods, microwave in three minutes. Usually have things like garlic, artichoke hearts. Of course, we have lots of bananas. One of the things I do is I freeze entree. So this is my tostada rice, and this will be a meal for my husband and I at some point. I do have leftover streusel topping from the last time I made it. Oh, one thing that's wonderful, hash browns. No oil, no sugar, no salt. You put this in your panini press or your air fryer. It makes delicious hash browns. I am out of Brussels sprouts. I ate the last one yesterday. I do freeze some can of yams in one cup uh, things so that if I have to make a recipe, I do have vegan dog food, fresh vegan dog food. Okay, so that's my refrigerator, uh, freezer. Let's see what's in the fridge. Okay. So we don't have quite a lot right now. Um, I, have a, I have a lot of jam. I love the sugar-free jams and I have almost every flavor. My husband does eat nut butters. I won't touch those. Oh, lots of greenies. So we've got, you know, shredded organic kale. Love the power greens from Costco. A lot of broccoli. I eat broccoli every day for lunch. I just love it. I love the organic from Trader Joe's. Let's see. What else are here? Oh, all my potato. Okay. Oh. Love to air fry these. Hubby eats this every day for breakfast. We ship for his crunch. A whole drawer full of, I love Trader Joe's. This is another wonderful mix that you can get. Shredded carrots for my dog. Oh, these are all. Oh. These are great, by the way, if you haven't had them. Costco has great prices on Asian pears. Oh, and you know what? I just found a few pomegranate seeds. I'm going to put this on top of the cherry cobbler to make it pretty. And I might even put a few of these the blueberries I'll put on the Hannah Yam. So that's kind of, you know, there's not a lot of food there right now. So it looks like we have to go shopping. A lot of salsa. I'm a salsa nut. This is not good anymore. This was just... <laughs> <laughs> this was a great find i just found at costco it's one ingredient organic pineapple and it's sauce so we put it on pie we put it on nice cream it was fabulous always have lemon juice and lime juice always have some sea vegetables for my iodine yeah I, um what's missing though is the cooked starch because i did not put it in the refrigerator yet i just cooked them today so yeah good Thank you for that tour. <laughs> I know. I'm just like thankful that there was nothing that I could be embarrassed. I mean, there would never be anything non-vegan, but my husband is not a food addict. He's never been overweight, so he has some of the richer things. But it's not, I think like the worst thing that we have is like an Amy's entree, you know. Which, <laughs> enough, Amy's is right here. Like they have the actual restaurant here. And there's not one thing that I can eat on that menu. I said, can you just feed me some broccoli? No, nope. sorry. So, but the other restaurants in Sacramento are so accommodating to make SOS free if you tell them 12 to 24 hours in advance. That's amazing. Anyone hey. else have any last minute questions? Um, the, the yams that you had, uh, what are they called again? Where do you get them? Yeah. So if, if you follow me on social media, I made a post about them today. They're not normally five pounds like this. Normally I get the ones that are one and a half to two pounds. In California, they're every single store. As, as a matter of fact, the only stores that don't carry them are Costco and Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, Sprouts, Winco, Raley's, every ethnic market. It's just, I know that some people where they live can't find them, but you can actually buy them online. Once you taste these, I promise you'll never eat an orange one again. They're so good. Look at how what beautiful. Are they called? Han, they're called either Hannah Yam, Jersey sweet potatoes or white sweet potatoes. Those are the three names I have seen them by. They're kind of yellowish on the inside and this color on the outside. And for those yeah. of you who are local, you can get them at Garden Patch Market in South Bend. They're so good. On I'm telling you, they changed my life when I was first tasted one at True North 11 years ago. And I've had one every day for lunch for the last 11 years because they're so good. <laughs> if I was going to be executed on death row this would be my last meal <laughs> <It's that good. laughs>
Oh, we all, I have another question too. We didn't see like any like meal entrees, but in terms of cooking without salt, um, what are some yeah. substitutes for salt? We just, you know what, the reason we don't have any entrees is I just did a class for Dr. McDougall and then 12 people came and ate everything. But some substitutes for salt, if you want, I can go grab them from my pantry. And first of all, it's just fresh herbs. Fresh herbs are amazing if you use them. But Benson's Table Tasty is one that I really like. And one is called Salacious from Local Spicery. These are online items, but they actually do taste like salt. Yeah. I, I don't okay. have a question. Oh, I don't have a question as much as I do a statement, but I just wanted to say I love your AJ Live show every day. And thank you so much for going live every day. That show has just been so helpful and so full of information. And I look forward to it every day. So thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Because sometimes I wonder, is anybody watching? But thank you. I really appreciate it. Because today I had an animal rescue on and there was like 58 people watching. I'm like, I don't think they want to hear about this. But I really appreciate you saying that. Thank you. All right, well, if there is no other questions, thank you so very much, Chef AJ, for joining us. And to everybody who came today, thank you so much for joining us.